right, in this video we're going to look at uh, a muscle twitch, uh, what goes into the contraction of a single muscle fiber and kind of look at some aspects of it. So when people were studying these, they, they decided to take just a single muscle fiber and they put it on a little electrode, you know, attached it to some stuff and they ran an electrical current on it to see it contract and they would measure all the different aspects of it and so uh, when we're looking at this again a muscle twitch just ends up being the contraction of a single muscle fiber now one of the first things they found is there is a threshold stimulus there is a minimum strength of electrical current basically needed to cause a muscle fiber to contract and that uh, it turns out that the contraction is an all or none contraction. That just means it's either going to contract or it's not. Now there's some things that we're going to look at in this video that will show how we can make a contraction stronger, but in the grand scheme of things it's either going to contract or it's not. Uh, and it ends up being that the overlap of the actin and myosin and how much there is is going to contribute to the strength of contraction. So it's not that a a larger electrical stimulus will cause a greater contraction. It won't. It is the overlap. So we'll get to that. I hope I didn't mess up by getting too far ahead. But um, So just as soon as we hit, hit the uh, threshold stimulus and action potential is generated, and it starts going through and it, it goes through the stuff we looked at in the last video. It's going to cause the, going to go in through the transverse tubules and electrify the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It'll let go of the calcium that will bind to tropamin that will cause the tropomyosin to remove, get removed from the binding sites and then the uh, myosin heads will bind to it and form cross bridges and let go of ADP and phosphate. The ADP and phosphate binds the, together to form ATP and the cycle repeats itself. Now, as that's happening, this is going to be a twitch. So, the twitch is going to have three parts to it we're going to look at. A latent period, which is the period between the time that the neuron secretes or releases the acetylcholine and binds to the receptors on the motor end plate. And then all that stuff happens until that first bit of movement where the myosin heads have bound to the binding sites and move forward. That's the latent period. So all the stuff that happens before there's any real movement. The period of contraction is obviously the period of movement where the fibers are being pulled inward. When we release acetylcholine esterase and it breaks down the acetylcholine and stops the contraction, then we go into what's called a period of relaxation. So this is what it looks like on a chart. This latent period is a very short period. Uh, obviously, all that stuff is going to happen very quickly. Then we're going to cause the um, we're going to cause the sarcomere to shorten here in the uh, period of contraction. I'm going to release acetylcholine esterase in here, and now it's going to relax. And you can see that the period of relaxation here is longer than the period of contraction. It takes longer to get back to where it was than it does to go from being relaxed and contracted. All right, so this little period in here is where we're going to start looking at how we can play with the strength of the contractions. So the length of the muscle fiber before stimulation determines the amount of force that it can develop. Optimum starting length is the resting length of the muscle fiber. That is the resting length of the muscle fiber. This allows the greatest force to develop. Stretch muscle fibers develop less force because there's less overlap since some of the myosin heads cannot reach the binding sites on actin. Shorten muscle fibers also develop less force since the compressed sarcomere can't shorten any further. So this kind of so shows the, what we're talking about. Now I'm going to look at it and start on this side and move this way. So on this, with this overly stretched, you see that there's some myosin heads that don't have anything to bind to. So imagine that we've got a tug of war happening. And so I've got this rope and I've got people pulling on the rope here and here and here and here. But then I've got people standing over here that aren't doing anything. 
since they're not doing anything, they can't contribute to it. It's only when I have this pulled back far enough that they can join in and grab a hold that it starts increasing the strength. So the fact that we have these these um, myosin heads that aren't attached to anything, this is going to cause it to have a, a less less strength because there's less arms pulling on it. The optimal length is when we have this nice little overlap. You see there's no wasted myosin heads, but there's still plenty of room for the actin to be pulled together. But once we get it too short, now we're going to lose strength really quickly because the actin can't go any farther. So there's no more strength of contraction. So we go from where we you know, it's weak because we have extra heads. There's not a lot of overlap. So since we only have this much pulling, it's going to be uh, weaker than when we have all of them pulling. But then once we get to the point where there's no place to put the actin, then that's going to cause an issue. Now, when we look at what we can do in this period of relaxation, this, this period going back to like it was, we can see a couple things can happen. Now, but this is the this is the chart that shows it, and I'm going to explain it here on the next thing with this, these pictures in mind. But what this is saying, this first one is saying, I'm going to send a signal in and start the contraction. I'm going to contract, and then I'm going to go through the period of relaxation. And I'm not going to contract this muscle again until I'm fully relaxed. At that time, you're going to, if I do that, it's going, to in, it's going to elicit the same strength. That's why every one of these little um, recordings is of the same height, because it's the same strength. But now what happens is if I take and I stimulate a muscle fiber after it's been contracted, but before it's relaxed all the way back down, what happens is I'm going to have a better, if I were able to draw it, and I know that this is a terrible drawing, but if I had it where I had as a much better overlap now because it hasn't relaxed all the way back to where the myosin heads were free, then this is going to have more myosin heads grab onto it, and so I'm going to increase the contraction, and it keeps doing that. This is called summation. Now this next one is called tetanic contraction. We'll see this in just a second, but this happens so fast that it, it basically locks up the system. This is what we call a cramp. So, summation, the process by which the force of individual muscle fiber twitches combine when frequency of the stimulation increases, produces a sustained contraction, and can lead to partial or complete tetanic contraction, if it is uncontrolled. But this is how, like, people that work out and people that are in a very big power lifting or, or um, are sports that require a, lot of, require a lot of strength, this is how they warm up their muscles. This is why they do slight reps, but they don't let their muscles relax all the way back to where they were, and so it produces a much stronger contraction. But if this starts happening where it is uncontrolled, then we get into this tetanic or contraction or tetanus. Partial tetani is when the frequency of the simulations increase, but um, it, it's, it's just... It's almost like when you feel the little twitch around your eye. Um, I think everybody's probably felt that, the little muscle twitch. Uh, complete tetany, this is a cramp. This is when um, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to for it's going to lock up, basically. Now, this says it only occur, it does not occur in the body, only in a laboratory. This is saying that if you don't, it doesn't let go. Uh, our cramps have a point where they, they let go and it's, it's done. So, uh, only thing I want you to know here again, because we don't get into cramps a lot, tetanus or uh, tetani, I'm not worried about partial or complete, just I want you to know this is another name for a muscle cramp, all right? A muscle cramp is when the, the it's kind of like summation gone wrong, where we're trying to increase the contraction, but the frequency, the, uh, the times between relaxing and stimulating happens so quickly that it just locks up the system. All right, I hope that makes sense. Again, understand that, that um, increasing the, the, the electrical current does not increase the muscle contraction force. It is when we have a better overlap of the actin and myosin that creates the stronger, um, 
the stronger muscle contraction. And we do we can do that by a process called summation. If summation gets a little too crazy and we have it coming too fast, the frequency of the stimulation, then we have tetanus, which is a cramp. All right. Again, I hope that makes sense and uh, have a wonderful day. Take care.